Thank you for joining us today on our newest build. Let me ask you a question. Do you work with a laptop, maybe work from home, work at an office, and you're kind of tired of doing this? Well, I know I was, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you are. You wouldn't be even watching this video, right? So what we came up with is this. This is a portable laptop stand that allows you to adjust it to whatever height is most comfortable for your typing. So in today's video, we're going to be showing you how to go and build this from start to finish and uh, all the little intricacies on how that actually is done. So definitely stay tuned for that. In the meantime, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification icon for all of our newest videos. In the meantime, let's get to the build. The first thing we're going to do is go ahead and cut down some scrap wood that we had laying around. Just using our little table saw band saw trick to go and make a good accurate cut on that. If you haven't seen that video, we'll go ahead and post that above. And then we're going to go ahead and measure out for the spot where we're going to actually be putting the laptop. Now we just want to go ahead and measure this out to length. So basically from the left to right on your laptop. Now every laptop is going to be a little different on this, so we won't be including dimensions for this part. Basically you want to add in about a fourth of an inch on each side. And just go ahead and cut it down to size. And we'll do a few of those so that way we can get a good uh, panel glued up for the laptop that we're going to be making this for. In this case here, we're going to go ahead and utilize our planer. Of course, you could always use a hand plane for this, but a uh, regular planer with a sled always works well. Lovely piece of extra sapelli we did that one on. And then basically just lay down a piece of tape to do the glue up. So just basically put it like that. I decided I wanted a little bit of a style line right in the center there, or an inlay if you may. So we're going to go ahead and put that in the middle. This actually turned out to be extremely strong. We built this about right around about the beginning of the pandemic. So that would have been March of 2020. And I've been using it ever since and it's actually stayed together really well. So this glue up actually works really, really good. Now we did add in a little extra piece here and it's the second you'll be seeing. Always clean up your glue on these types of things. Now we just went ahead and put this with a different direction of grain on it. So that we would hold together. And there we go. Now we're just cutting down the strips right here for the front. This will actually be the palm rest on the laptop stand. And this will be the sides. As you can see, they're definitely a lot smaller and a lot thinner. And this actually works out for a few reasons. Number one is we want to keep it a little light. And number two is we want to be able to <laughs> get that through. As you can see here, the board decided it had a mind of its own. Careful doing that procedure I just did, by the way. And then we just continue cutting down strips. The feather board definitely, definitely helps out on this because you don't have to change your orientation each time with the fence to be able to get the same cut. So it definitely adds to consistency. And this one here is a little risky, but uh, still wound up working out fine. We did not have kickback on this, but Having properly planed boards is really, really important if you're going to do something like that because you want that to be nice and smooth against that fence. But always use safety in the shop. Now we're just going to go ahead and cut a dado in here. Uh, we're cutting the first dado at roughly, uh, it's probably about a sixteenth of an inch is I think what we came up with at that time. And the reason why we did the dado so shallow to the top is because we want to be able to make sure we can plug in the power cords and accessories and whatnot. 
You'll probably want to do the same when you go to cut yours, so that way you can plug things in reliably, but they don't necessarily, you know, but you still want to have that framing on there so it's still strong. So definitely a good hardwood always helps. And all you have to do to finish off the uh, one fourth or one eighth board, whatever you're using, is just flip the board over and then cut it in the opposite direction, just like we're doing here. And that will leave you the data slot. And then we're just going to go ahead and miter our corners here so this way we can make a mitered frame. Since this isn't dealing with a lot of back and forth kinds of stresses and whatnot, uh, the mitered frame seems to work out just fine on there. As you can tell, this is what it looks like. And what we want to do here is we have these little, uh, basically where they're going to become cutouts, like there. And these are where the vent ports are on my Dell laptop that I have. This is really important. You're going to be closing off the back of the laptop. You need a way for the hot air to escape, and that actually works out perfectly fine. A little bandsaw action or jigsaw action will get you going there. And then the glue up on this is pretty simple. Just basically glue it to the center board and you're good to go. Now we made a little template in Photoshop for making little climbing stairs is kind of what it looks like. And this is actually for the lifting parts. This way it stays in place and whatnot. So it's kind of like a little machine in that sense. You can't see them very well on here, but there's a little 45 and 90 degree um, half triangles all the way down the whole thing that make that possible. Now, don't worry if you happen to break one of these uh, when you're installing them, it's really not that big of a deal. As you can see, this is where a bandsaw comes in really handy, because this would be pretty hard to do with a jigsaw. Not impossible, but you know, you'd have to put the jigsaw upside down and whatnot to be able to do it. And getting those 45s would be a little bit difficult on the jigsaw. Now these don't have to be perfect to your pattern, even though I tried to get mine. It, they just need to be approximately correct, just like so you now. And they come out looking like that. Now we're just going to go ahead and cut down the what literally is the lid, or in essence the place where the laptop's going to be sitting. And then this time I decided to just use a dado blade for this. You could still use a single blade method, that would work just fine. I just happened to have a dado blade and this was more efficient. And these are actually the parts for the bottom portion. All right, and basically all you're doing here is just cutting some 45s on the four identical pieces. So you're pretty much just making a picture frame at this point for a laptop. So I'll just put a little bit of glue here on the mitered edges. Again, I know this is the most secure way of putting this together, but at the end of the day, this isn't generally going to be dealing with a lot of stress, I would hope. I hope you're not like tossing it around or anything. Uh, and I can tell you, after using it for a year, this has worked just fine, quite frankly. So I don't think you'll have any problems. Just a simple tape of the sides and then a little bit of sanding down later uh, to make sure everything's good and lined up and looking nice. And again, this is just a scrap wood project, so these are just scraps. And so now we're going to make little feet. These basically uh, allow for you to actually use those little stairs that we made earlier, which will make a lot more sense here later on in the video. Those are also cut to 45, and then a little kind of round shaped cut was made in order to be able to make it available to put in a 1 fourth inch dowel of walnut that we're going to show right here. And basically the dowel just fits right in there, and boom, that's pretty much it. This is going to be our top bracket. 
Uh, this is where the Dell will actually connect into. I'll be showing you how that works again here in uh, just a few minutes. You just want to make sure that that's uh, as close to the edge as possible and then give it a quick little chop. Again, like I mentioned in the video earlier, you can use just about a large variety of tools in order to be able to do this. We're just using what we have on hand. So we split this one down the middle because well, we made it too large. So this makes it into some little blocks. This could be done at a table saw, but it's pretty small pieces. So bandsaw is generally a better option if you have it. And we're just going to put these here temporarily for spacing so this way we can put in the track. As you can see we've managed to snap both of the tracks <laughs> all very quickly because they are pretty thin, but they're very durable once they're glued down. And that's really what you're looking for. And we're just going to go ahead and drill some holes most of the way through the board. And this is for the dowel. So this way you can get the swinging action. I'm just going to go ahead and cut down our dowel to the recommended size here for what we're working with. A saw does not like these small pieces. Probably should have used the trim saw. All right, and then we just pop that into there, and if you cut it correctly, those two little sides should fit perfectly on each side. Now we're going to go ahead and glue on the feet. As you can see, I'm putting some blue painter's tape here underneath the dowel. And this does two things. Number one, it keeps the glue off the bottom. And number two is it keeps the little foot in place, so that way it doesn't go flying around. We did put a liberal amount of glue on there just to make sure it stayed. And this basically gives you the general idea of how it looks when it's assembled. You can see these just kind of pop into place and kind of hold on to where they need to hold on to. And I'm actually pushing down pretty hard on that and that's not going anywhere. So this is pretty much good to go. So now all we need to do is glue that onto the top frame and those will be good to go. And I did put a little bit of CA on here just to kind of help make sure that these got set correctly and yeah, with a good firm set and we were kind of trying to move the project along a bit so that's also part of the reason why we use CA on this first part. And then we followed up with a little bit of wood glue here and that's of course where we get that good permanent bond. CA doesn't necessarily hold things like this on very tightly. Wood glue on the other hand quite the opposite hold on nice and firm. This is actually a little bit of a try here. You can try to put it on the way I'm doing it right here or probably the best way to do it is just flip it over and then tape it down. Um, I didn't realize that at the time so this is not a terrible example but it's also not the best example. And then we just took a router and kind of rounded over the end there so that way we have that nice palm rest that we need uh, to keep our hands on so that way you don't wind up wearing out your palms on the uh, rest there. Obviously a sharp corner is not preferable when typing all day. And we did a little bit of sanding after this to kind of smooth that out because it didn't come out all that smooth after the router, you can imagine. And then we just went ahead and made our mortises for the hinges. Basically, we just used some very tiny hinges uh, that we picked up. I'll see if I can get a link to it. If I can, I'll put it down in the description. Um, that basically we used to do this and we just put them on backwards. So. Basically, this would be like the back of the object or the lid, you might say. But since it obviously has to lift up, we just put them in backwards. So that way it works forwards. So that's uh, about as about how that engineering on that works. I'll show you a little bit more of that here in a little bit.
Then we just went ahead and rubbed on some Watco uh, dark walnut on here to really kind of give it that extra shine. Now Watco could be used as a protectant, but ultimately I like to put a secondary protectant on Electra Lacquer Lacquer. In our case, we'll be spraying uh, uh, lacquer actually on this. I also decided to darken up this wood as well. Just kind of give it a nice finish. It's, most people are never going to see this part, but there's something that's nice and visual in case you do pick up your laptop. It gives a very uh, kind of almost all like a light walnut kind of a look to the white wood that you have there. I believe that was white oak, if I remember right. And this was maple here on the outside. And of course you just wipe that stuff off uh, shortly after you put it on. Keeps it from getting sticky, which it will. And then we're just uh, spraying on some lacquer here. Lacquer was a little bit more preferable because it's not temperature sensitive like shellac is. So a little bit better finish for what you're doing here. Notice we have some little boo-boos down there at the bottom. That's not going to show though because that's where the latches are. This gives you a little bit of an idea because we did use a gloss on there of what it looks like. Now we're just going to go ahead and install the hinges and you can see these are being installed backwards so that way it works forwards. And these are just a hand tightened type of a thing. We actually pre-drilled on this. After you get those in you're pretty much done at that point. Um, we had some rubber feet we added on. They eventually just fell off. That was fine. Um, they didn't really need the rubber feet, but they were kind of nice. Um, we wind up using this uh, literally in our lap and whatnot, so it's not really that big of a deal that they aren't there. But uh, it makes it a little bit nicer when you're putting it on a table. As you can see with those little feet, as I'm demonstrating here, it uh, allows it to kind of pop up and hold in place without falling backwards. And that's basically the whole build, so hope that helps you guys out. Well, I hope you enjoyed our video over this really neat laptop adjustable stand. Uh, I hope that this inspires you to build something very similar yourself. Uh, we didn't include any dimensions in this plan because this is built obviously for this specific laptop. But that being said, you just had to have to adjust it for whatever laptop that you had. So. Uh, overall, not too bad. Um, but in the meantime, don't forget to like, subscribe, and uh, hit the bell notification icon for all of our newest videos. In the meantime, stay 